Hi guys, Rose here with the Cackling Moon. Um, I'm here in the kitchen, so if it's echoey, that's why. Um, it's because I, it's the kitchen. <laughs> it's the kitchen and I don't have, you know, super amounts of furniture and this and that. I'm just, I'm not like, I'm not into furnishing the house right now because we may not even be here for much longer, depending on my husband's job situation. So, but that's another video. <laughs> um, and it'll be a good thing, you know, it'll be, a, it'll be a good thing if we have to relocate. I mean, if, even if we stay put, it'll still be a good thing, but it just depends. It depends on the circumstances of, of that. But I'm not ready to talk about that yet. I wanna talk about it when I know what's gonna happen because I don't want to like, jinx myself so let's just let's just shut up on that topic okay um so earlier i did a q a video and sorry you guys for filming vertical it's just easier for me to stand up the little tripod on the kitchen table and i don't have to go get like fucking boxes and stuff because if it's if it's filming this way i have to make it higher so that it films my face and not just my boobs <laughs> But if I'm feeling like this, it's just easier. So I'm just gonna do it this way because I don't really wanna get all techie with this. It's 9.30 and I'm gonna be leaving for work in like an hour, so. You get what you get. <laughs> okay, so a couple videos back I did a Q&A and a lot of you guys asked some really amazing questions and there was one question in particular that I felt I needed to do a whole separate video on. And the question was along the lines of like tips for reading for other people. And I just felt like that question was so, it was something that I could expand on. It's something I have experience with and it's something I feel like a lot of my viewers are also tarot readers or aspiring readers, beginner readers, veteran readers. I mean, we have a whole plethora of you guys watching. <laughs> Um, so I felt like, you know, I could share some of my tips and my experiences and maybe you can go off and utilize some of those for yourself. So tips for reading for other people. Now, this is both in person and also online. Okay. So let's talk about in person first, because in person is probably the most the one where a lot of these tips, you're gonna probably find them very, very useful because reading for people in person is a whole different experience than reading online, okay? I'm gonna say it again. Reading for people in person is a whole other ball game from reading online, okay? When you're reading online, if you're doing Skype or FaceTime, you could see them. But if you're doing it the way I do it, where I intuitively connect, the person doesn't have to be there. I'm just doing the reading. I record it and I send them the link so that it looks like they are sitting with me. That's the way I do my readings because I find my intuition is on point 10 times stronger than it is when I have eyeballs looking at me. <laughs> So reading in person is a really cool experience because it gives you a challenge. It gives you um, something to try, you know, it's, a, it's something new to try. It's just, um, it, it really enhances your reading, your ability to read. Um, it enhances your trust and your intuition and all of the above, but it is also quite nerve-wracking when you have an actual physical person sitting not too far away from you watching your every room your every move making intense eye contact with you crying sometimes they're laughing sometimes they're just making these facial expressions and they may not be aware of their facial expressions and you're just watching it and taking it all in on top of taking in what you are receiving from spirit right that's why it's a whole another enchilada <laughs> um, so reading in person, um, some tips I have is number one, probably my most important tip is use a deck you are comfortable with. Okay. Use a deck that you read constantly with. Okay. 
your go-to. We all have a go-to deck as tarot readers. It may be your own one and only deck, or it may be that one deck you always pick because it makes you feel comfortable and your intuitive hits come naturally with it. Um, for me, that would be any type of Rider weight deck um, or my Psychic Tarot. Those are the two, my go-tos, that I just, I know without a doubt. And usually I pick both of them at the same time. Usually without, you know, without a doubt, I know I can do any kind of question, any kind of reading, any kind of person with those decks. Um, so those are my safe decks. So designate a safe deck for your in-person sessions, okay? You can bring all of your other ones. You can bring your pretty decks. You could bring a new one you're working with, but always have your safe deck in your bag just in case. It's all, it's like that backup, you know, it's that, it is that safe deck that you know, if shit hits the fan and I get a blank, I have the deck in my purse. I can go and pull it out and use and I'll be safe. <laughs> it just makes you feel better. It makes you feel comfortable. It makes you feel safe. So that's a big tip. That's, a, that's probably the most important. Um, next is to utilize decks that are visually appealing. And I'm only holding this one up because I have it in my hand right now. I like to have something in my hand when I do videos. I should have a crystal, but. So uh, utilize a deck that is visually appealing. Something that has beautiful imagery, colorful imagery, soft imagery. Um, Something that won't freak out your clients if you're reading for somebody who is, maybe this is their first tarot reading and they're nervous because you're going to experience that. You're going to experience those people who are nervous, um, who are scared, but they're also curious, right? So don't bring out a deck that is like vampires, demons, or whatever, you know, for someone who it's their first time <laughs> because that might scare them. Um bring out something a little bit more softer, okay? Also, get to know your clients. Um, if you have an in-person client that maybe you've read with multiple times and you know, oh, they have a very watery, like um, Pisces personality. So I like to use my mermaid decks with them. Or maybe you have a male client who has very intense masculine energy and they don't really connect with your unicorn deck. <laughs> so maybe you're, you'll pull out like your Dreams of Gaia tarot or your Rider Waite or your, um, your Wildwood tarot. You know what I mean? Like you kind of want to fit the deck with the client's personality. And that's, that's only if you know ahead of time who the person is. Now, if you're reading in a shop <laughs> and you just do walk-in readings, because I would do that all the time, and you don't necessarily know who your clients are and what their personalities are going to be like, you're literally just, hi, nice to meet you. Okay, come back and let's have a reading. You don't know anything about this person. Um, the challenge there is you're really challenging your intuition and, and, and all of that. You'll never be afraid to do a reading once you do in like shop readings like that. Um, but it's good to have a, a, a variety. So when I would go to the shops and read, I would always have right away. I would always have um, the right away and the psychic tarot were always there with me. But then I would bring like, you know, maybe an animal type oracle deck or I would bring something feminine and then something masculine as well, you know, just in case I had a more masculine client versus the feminine. There's so many different types of decks out there. There's a deck for everybody, you know, um, if it was, and then also I would also read for the seasons too. So you could also do that. Um, instead of focusing in on the client's energy, you could also just say, oh, it's the Halloween season. So bring out all your cute little Halloween decks, you know, keep it simple. Um, so you could also do that. You could do that as well. Um, what else? Also, your, the ambiance of your reading space is important, okay? This will really set the tone for your clients. Um, it'll make them come calm down. <laughs> it will give them something visual to focus on instead of looking right at you. Like literally, like how do you feel when you have someone's eyes on you constantly, right? 
So have stuff that is visually appealing and relaxing in your reading space. If you are reading in your tarot room, like in my tarot room, it's visually appealing. I have this big bright ass salmon colored wall, which was already painted that way when I moved in. But I also have my bookshelves with crystals everywhere and I have candles and I have um, incense lit sometimes or sprays, the aroma. My husband always says, yeah, the whole house smells normal, but when I go into your tarot room, it smells like a crystal shop. And I'm like, yes, because that's what it's supposed to smell like. <laughs> um, it's just visually appealing. You have some you know, pictures on the walls or a tapestry, something that just is so relaxing, but it also enhances your tarot reading experience, right? How many times do you see on the movies people going to, to a psychic, right? And they, they walk in and there's tapestries all over the walls and it's so bohemian looking and it's like the big crystal ball on the table. Like, I'm telling you, when you read in a shop, you're gonna get those customers who come in who are going to expect that reading experience because that's the stereotype. And you can totally break that stereotype, that reputation, but also make it fun too. So I liked to always, like if I was reading in a shop, um, she the, the store owner would have her room done in a certain way. So there was like furniture and she would have like a salt lamp and, and a very, a really cute little like waterfall type of fountain thingy. Um, and then I would always opt to, well, this is another tip, so I won't get into that yet, but she would already have her room decorated, right? But I would also bring my own flavor into it. So I would always bring my own candles. Um, I would bring my own crystals. I would bring my own tablecloth. That's another tip. So you, you want to design your space to be your, your own energy because the more at home you make it feel, the more at home you're going to feel doing the readings. Um, let's say you're just meeting up with somebody at the Starbucks and you're doing a reading for them. How many times did I do that with my clients? I did that a lot. <laughs> so when I was doing in-person readings for people, I would always meet up at the local coffee shop and, um, and you know, you're meeting at the coffee shop. I would usually opt for sitting outside in the outdoor sitting to give my client that peace of mind that there's no one hovering around listening to their questions or to decrease the, the shyness or embarrassment factor of we're pulling cards and doing a reading. Cause some people get embarrassed by that, you know? Um, and then also for me to decrease having other energies around me while I'm connecting with one person because um, <laughs> if I have a lot of people around me, I tend to kind of pick up on other people and I don't wanna do that when I'm reading for a person. So I would always opt for sitting outside, finding like that perfect spot that is away from too many people and it's not in the sun, it's in the shade. And so I had found my perfect spot. So that's where I would always do my meetups but you're utilizing their stuff. So all you're gonna get is a table and chairs, right? So what I used to do is um, I would bring tablecloth or a, a spread cloth um, and put that on the table. I would bring crystals. I would have my spray um, and my deck, you know? And so I would try to make it as visually appealing as I could utilizing the space I was in, okay? And then also, if, you're, if you are utilizing a public space for your readings, make sure that that company, that business is okay with it, okay? So if it's a coffee shop, ten time, nine times out of 10, they're gonna be okay with it because you, there's so many people that utilize that space for work and other, other things. But, um, so you don't really have to ask for permission, but just be nice and buy something from them because you're using their space, you know? So what I would always do is before I would even set up, set up shop, <laughs> um, <coughs> I would go and buy my iced coffee or an, a lemonade or a little biscuit thingy. Um, I would always buy something from them because I wanted them to know I'm a paying customer. Yes, I'm utilizing your space for my business, but... I just bought something from you guys. So it's like a trade-off. It's an energetic trade-off and they're usually very, you know, they're, they're kind to that. Um, even if I was sitting outside, I would still buy something, you know, cause it's, you're still using their space. Um, so always ask for permission, especially if you're gonna be using a smaller space, like, you know, 
at like a little bookstore, something where it's more obvious that you're <laughs> that you're using it for something else, you know? Always ask for permission. But if you're going to like a coffee shop or a restaurant, you don't really have to ask for permission for that. It's more buy something from them so that they f you get that energetic exchange going. Um, okay, oh, okay, so the other tip I was gonna say was the lighting in your room. When you're reading for people, um, the last thing you wanna do is have fluorescent lights on, okay? And I say that because fluorescent lighting is like you're at fucking work, you know? You're at work or you're at school. <laughs> And it's not relaxing. It's actually very stressful. So if you have the ability to control the lighting in your space, dim the lights, okay? Opt for natural lighting versus um, artificial lighting, unless in my case, like certain times of the day, I have to have the artificial lighting on to film because the reading will be too dark. <laughs> <laughs> so in those cases that's different but if you're reading in person opt for opening a window and having natural lighting in coming in versus the artificial stuff if you have dimmers on your lights dim the lights put on some salt lamps okay turning on salt lamps or like um, just dim lighting is so much more relaxing not only for yourself but for your client as well because like I said if they are nervous it's gonna relax them you never go in and get a massage and it's like fucking bright as fuck in the in the room it's just never like that so keep that same kind of a an essence essence going for your readings you know dim the lighting soften it up turn on the salt lamps put a diffuser on with something relaxing to smell if you're lighting incense for your readings have the incense out of the way <laughs> don't have it on the table with the client I made that mistake one time and I was the one sneezing and paying for it because I had bad um bad um allergies um, so if you have incense on, you could totally burn incense, but put it off to the side or have it next to an open window, like open the window just a crack. If you don't want to have a lot of like outside noise, open it just a crack. And I actually do this for my readings. Um, open it just a crack, put the incense around that location. So the smoke has somewhere to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're, you're still getting that, that smell of incense being lit, but it's not like smoking in your face, you know, um, spray your room. If you don't do the incense, spray your space and you, you know, that aroma will last. People will smell it when they walk in. Um, reading for people in person. What else? Um, designate if you feel comfortable letting them touch your cards or not okay so you have to kind of you should have already figured that out as a reader am i comfortable with someone touching my cards or not i am so this is my own personal opinion i am comfortable with it because i'm also very comfortable with cleansing my own tools so i will let my clients touch the cards and i actually i actually um i actually in um Oh my god what is the word i'm looking i actually tell them like touch my cards <laughs> touch my cards <laughs> um sometimes i will get them involved in the reading especially wow i just had major deja vu right now fucking i dreamt this at one point in the past okay okay sorry um <laughs> i've actually told a client before um to shuffle my cards because I could, I could feel off of her that she was really nervous and she was real jittery. And as an empath, and I'm sure a lot of you guys too will relate, if someone is fucking jittery and nervous, I'm gonna start feeling jittery and nervous. And there was one time where I sat with a client and I looked at her, I was like, are you really nervous right now? Like, your, is your stomach hurting you? She's like, yes, yes. And I was like, girl, stop, because mine is too. <laughs> so you, you will start to, to feel the cues of your, within your body with your clients. Um, so if you're comfortable with your client shuffling the cards, let them do it. It makes them feel, especially if this is one-on-one -on -one in person, it makes them feel included, okay? It makes them feel included in the reading. 
it makes them feel like they are putting their hands on the cards and so what the what messages come through with those cards it's like oh you pulled it you shuffle the deck so if i pull the tower and the devil for you oh girl you pulled that so <laughs> so that's why i'm saying like it's a really cool it's a cool way to get them involved without you know it, it's not gonna screw up the reading, you know, you still could take the deck and then pull the cards yourself, but give them a chance to be a part of it in that way. If you're not comfortable with them touching your cards, bring some crystals that you're comfortable with them holding. Um, so I like to get, I like to bring Labradorites, which let me get my Labradorites so I can show you guys. I am so big on Labradorite. It's in my bag somewhere. It's probably like at the very bottom. Where are you? I just put you in here. Okay, that's not my Labradorite. Sorry guys, this is me not being prepared. No, baby girl, you can't come up here. She always wants to, um, be with me which I don't mind like I want her to be attached but she cries if I'm not with her poor thing oh my god I, ha I can't find it anyways I always bring a labradorite palm stone here it is um because labradorite palm stones are the one they fit in the palm of your hand they're smooth and just they're so relaxing so if you guys have access to crystals, I highly recommend all of you getting a Labradorite Palm Stone. One, to meditate with. Two, to hold when you're doing a reading. Cause you know, you can hold tumbled stones. You can hold a raw stone, but they're, they're not the most comfortable. Whereas the Palm Stone is designed to fit in your palm. It's smooth and it's just like, it's just easier. So I always bring a Labradorite palm stone and, um, and I usually will have one for myself to hold <laughs> in the reading because it relaxes me. Labradorite is good for connecting with your psychic abilities and all that stuff, but it's also relaxing for the client. And it was the best tip I ever got from the shop owner I read for um, that Labradorite will calm your energy. So anyone who is nervous and anxious, give them Labradorite and they will like... It's like they, f they hone in on the beauty of it and it relaxes them. So um, give them something to hold, okay? Give them a crystal to hold during the reading, especially if they're giving you feelings of being nervous. You could have the crystals out on the table and if they choose to reach for them, let them. But also tell them because a lot of times you're going to get clients who are going to sit down and they're just gonna be like st super still and they're like, they don't know if they're allowed to touch. They don't know if they're allowed to take a photo. They don't know if they're allowed to hold your crystals. Tell them. You have to communicate with your clients, which is another tip. Communicate with the person you were reading for. Tell them, um, you may touch my cards. You may touch my crystals. You may take photos of the reading. You may record the reading. You have to verbalize what you want and what you don't want. What do you allow and what you don't allow? So, especially if it's a first timer, you know, the first time you're reading with a client, go through your ethics with them, okay? That's another tip. Tell them. So this is the way that I do readings, and usually the way I would, it would, it would also be like the way I break the ice. So let's say I just sat down with a client, <laughs> and I would be like, hi, how are you today? And, and then they would be like, oh, I'm fine, blah, blah, blah. I always ask, how are you? And then I would say the way to break the ice and just to get them comfortable and to start talking is um, I would go, have you ever had a reading done before? And they'll either say, no, this is the first time. And then usually they'll say, if they say that this is the first time, they'll say, I'm really excited or I'm fucking nervous. <laughs> or they'll say, yeah, I have in the past. If they say yes, tell, ask them, what was your experience like? Did you like it? Just, you know, ask a question, get them to talk. That was the whole point is to get them to talk because when you're getting them to, to talk, it's like a warm up of that energy exchange. It's warming up. We're warming up here. <laughs> um, and then their anxiety levels drop and they're not as stressed. 
So get them to talk. So that's what I would ask. Oh, how was the reading before? Like, how was your previous reading? Or how was that experience? And they'll tell you. And so then I would say, okay, well, this is the way that I do things. And I would let them, I would give them my little spiel. I would say, this is the way that I do things. So um, I like to have a dialogue with my clients. So your reading is going to be more you and me in conversation versus just me doing all the talking. Please ask me questions. Please interrupt me because I can go on forever. <laughs> so I would say that. Um, I would also say you can touch my crystals. Sometimes I will let you um, shuffle the deck. Sometimes I will let you pull the card. Um, if you wanna take pictures of the, the reading, you can totally take pictures. Just don't put me in it. <laughs> um, but you can totally take pictures of the reading as it's laid out on the table. I highly encourage you take notes. So if you brought something to write with or if you wanna use your phone and take notes, um, I encourage that as well. Um, I had one or two times where a client asked me if they could um, record the reading with like their recording device on their phone. And I said, yes, that's fine. Some readers, they're not comfortable with that. Some readers will say, no, I'm okay with it. Um, but it's just, I would rather not be in the video. Um, so I would tell them you can record, but if you're doing video only on the table, I don't want to be in it, you know? Um, just for like privacy reasons and just for my own sake, like I don't want to be on someone's video. <laughs> um, so then, you know, you, you, you give your spiel. Basically, everything that you want them to know, you have to verbalize it because they're not going to be reading your mind, okay? And then start the reading. And then what I would say is I'm going to start the reading, so I would use my phone and always start the timer because my sessions were either 15, 30 minute. 45 or an hour and I could talk and talk so I would always say as soon as I'd start the timer your reading is now in session so I would start the timer start shuffling and then I would say okay start talking to me what's going on and it's like I treat it as a therapy session a counsel a spiritual counseling a spiritual therapy session where I would say just start talking to me what's going on tell me what your question is or just start talking to me about what issue you have or what you're looking for for today and they would start talking and I would start shuffling because the minute they start talking and I'm shuffling that energy, that's my cue of the energy exchange is moving and the reading just starts. Now, not every reading is going to go smoothly. Sometimes it's going to go literally like you're hitting walls. Usually that's my cue that the person that I'm reading for is closed off or they're skeptical. Um, sometimes the reading flows naturally. Sometimes the reading gets emotional, which is my next tip. Always have tissue for your client. I learned that through reading in the shop. Um, always have tissue in the room for your client because sometimes emotions flow, you know? A lot of times your clients are coming to you with questions for help. They're coming to you for questions because they don't want to talk to their parents or they don't want to talk to their friends or their spouse or their um, church leader or whoever, their therapist. Sometimes they need spiritual therapy because we get it and the other people don't, you know? So a lot of times the reading can get very emotional. Sometimes the cards bring up stuff from the past. Sometimes the cards bring up stuff that's really deep, right? Always have tissue for your client. Don't, don't assume that they're going to prepare for themselves because they don't know what to experience if it's their first time. So I would always have tissue for my client, especially when I was reading in the shop. Um, what else? I think this video alone is just purely going to be in-person readings, and then I'll do a separate video for online because it's a whole different ball game with online so this is just going to be my advice for in person um let me try i'm trying to think of what else comes up oh um collect their email address so if you are building your you know your client base make sure you take down their name and their email <laughs> so you can build up your email list and then you can keep in contact with them later on if they want to book a session with you, give them your business card. So every single session I would show up in and do the reading at the very end, it's like my little gift to them. At the very end, I would give them a homework assignment because usually the homework assignment is 
they are leaving my session with something, right? Aside from leaving with their emotions all in a wrap <laughs> and feeling, you know, oh my gosh, I just got some questions answered. They're also leaving with substance. So I also, I would give them a homework assignment, hoping that they'll come back to me for another session and, you know, we could discuss the homework assignment. Or I would also, or, or and I would also leave them with my business card. So I have a lot of, I have my business cards. I actually have to order more because I ran out. Or I'm getting close to running out. I always keep business cards in my wallet because you never know if you're gonna run into someone. I was in Barnes and Noble last week buying a deck. <laughs> And the girl at the counter was like, oh, I wanna learn reading the cards. And I was like, girl, follow me on Instagram. <laughs> so always have your business cards with you. And you, if you're having in-person sessions, you better have them and give them to your clients. These are new potential clients that you will be working with in the future. So I would give them a business card. And sometimes if I wanted to kind of like draw them in again, I would say, oh, if you book a second reading with me, I'll give you like $5 off. Something like that, you know? Just have to remember. You have to make a mental note and <laughs> remember that person, their name, you know, so you'll remember um, for the future. Because sometimes they won't book with you right away. They'll book with you like months later. Which brings me to my next tip. Have a fucking journal, okay? A reading journal, your client journal. And I have one. It's in my tarot room where um, I write down the name, the date of the client, the, okay, the date, the name of the client, and how much or how, how long the session was. Um, I do this for my, in -per for my online clients as well. And then I would, sometimes I would write down the questions that they ask, or I'll, I'll do a, a brief summary of the session. So that's what I would do after the session is over. And um, because I never, and this is another tip, but I'll get into that after. After the session is over, I would write down like my quick little summary, not a big old long thing, just a quick, you know, couple points, summary of the session with that client. And then I would also write down like, you know, this, their energy was this, they were like this, um, they were closed off, they were completely open, whatever. And, um, and I would write down what their homework assignment was just in case they came back, I would have something to resort back to because you're not gonna remember all that stuff, okay? You, let alone, you're not even gonna remember the reading itself, so <laughs> write it down. Um, and my other tip is don't walk out at the same time with your client, okay? If you're meeting somewhere to do a reading, let them leave first. You wait. Write it in your book, the appointment, how it went. Take your time, pack up your stuff because of privacy, just for privacy reasons. You don't want the client to know what car you drive. You don't want them to be following you and finding out where you live. Just, I was very, very careful about stuff like that. Now, I had clients that I would meet every month. <laughs> Those I'm fine with. So, Joanna, if you're watching this, I'm fine with that. But <laughs> but I was also meeting people in public spaces because I don't know who this person is. I've never met them before. <laughs> I don't know what their demeanor is. I don't know what their intentions are, right? So you have to be cautious. You have to be cautious. Even if the reading was phenomenal, you still have to be cautious. Um, so let them leave first. Wish them well. Let them go. Wait. Wait 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. And if they're not creepers, they won't be waiting in the parking lot for you. <laughs> Just be cautious. Um, and so I would always let them go and then I would, or unless if I know them, you know, like Joanna, I know Joanna. So if I would know them, I would walk out with Joanna. But that's different, you know? I've been reading for Joanna every, every once a month for the last two, three years. So it's like, I know her. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's someone you've never met before, you don't want to walk out with them. You don't know what they're capable of. You don't know if they're gonna look at your car and see where you live so they can come ask you for readings all the time. Like, come on, you have to just, you have to be protective, protect yourself, right? And I didn't want people to follow me home 
because I wasn't living in my own place. I was living with my parents. So I was just like, nah, I'm not gonna do that. So just be very mindful of your surroundings and just be smart about it. Always meet, if you're meeting someone for the first time and you know, don't know who they are, it has to be a public place, always. Um, so I would always have like that, my, my go-to coffee shop place, you know, and there was people around all the time, so shit wasn't gonna go down, or if shit was gonna go down, someone was gonna see it. <laughs> um, so meet in public settings. Um, if you are choosing to allow people that you've never met before come into your home, be very, very aware of who they are, okay? And trust your intuition. If something doesn't feel right, chances are it's not. So listen to that, okay? Um, I have not yet allowed people in my home for my for readings. I have a tarot space. I have a whole, a whole room dedicated to it. But my husband has asked me not to allow that right now um, because of our situation. He's not home all the time. So if he's home, he says he, we could do it. But if he's not home, he's like, no. So I, I, and I understand that. I think that's fair. <laughs> so my in-person sessions have since been non-existent to maybe I'll do it every once in a while, but I really haven't done my in-person sessions. I miss them, but at the same time, I just don't want to do it right now. Um, I, I would rather do them when feel comfortable when I have my husband around. So that's why I haven't been doing them. <laughs> and, um... What else for in-person sessions? I think that's pretty much it. It's a 36 minute video, so I'm gonna go ahead and upload it before I gotta leave for work. Um, I will do another video talking about my tips for reading for people online, so be on the lookout for that maybe in the next day or two. Maybe I'll film it tonight and then do it, or put it up tomorrow, I don't know, we'll see. But um, pay attention, look out for that. But in the meantime, I hope this helps. If you, have, if you guys have questions about anything I talked about, please leave them in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, and other than that, have a beautiful rest of the day and I will talk to you guys later. Bye loves.